Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the South Park Center and I'm here with Michael with his movie, This Land. Let's take a look at the clip. How much is that one? Which one? This Eagle. one, the red one. This one's special for you, $75. Cheese bubble. Cheese bubble? No, it's too expensive. That's too expensive. Why? Yeah. I give you a discount. Show me first which one you want. Show me. Michael, thank you for joining us and thank you for bringing your film to us as well, this land. Thank you for having um, me. For those that haven't seen it, tell us the brief synopsis of your film. Uh, so the film is, is a, an immigrant love story set on the backdrop of the counterfeit designer bag industry and it's the story of this, this man who, who works in, in this world and falls in love with this woman from his, uh, from his night school and sets out to buy her an authentic designer bag, uh, kind of being the, the end all of his world and the obstacles that he encounters along the way. And uh, it's, it's inspired by my father's story who, who did this for a little bit when, when they moved to the US because he didn't know any English and he couldn't find anything. So it's kind of, I took that idea and, and shaped it a little bit and changed some things, but more or less it's, it's his story. It was such a great testament to downtown of Los Angeles and all the hardworking people that have come from different countries that work their backsides off to, to make a living in this country. It was such a touching story. Um, now we say it was inspired a little bit by, by your own father, which is uh, amazing. When did you kind of decide, Michael, that you was like, I, I need to turn this into a film? Uh, I originally wrote it as a feature. Oh, you it did? was yeah, it was in the finals for the Sundance Labs, and we kind of workshopped it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just kind of got sick of the the packaging game and how long it takes to put things together. So we we took that idea and we turned it into a short, uh, and and we made this. And uh, but the idea itself had kind of been sitting in the back of my head for, you know, for probably since I was uh, like early teenage years, since my dad told me about this little few months stint he had uh, putting on the, the zippers of, of these fake bags. Yeah. Uh, and then it kind of came flooding back when we read this article uh, right before making the movie where these these large uh, chains, I think it was Macy's, was caught selling fake bags for several months and they had no idea because it was so real and, and that kind of made me wonder, you know, if it's as good as the real thing, then what's the difference other than it being a label and right. kind of the, using that theme to, to tackle these people in this world and yeah. the things we were talking about. So. That's kind of how it all came about. It was actually very alarming to actually watch your film. We weren't giving too much away, but just kind of seeing the journey of, 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 of these bags and, and where they go and how people treat them. And, you know, you had these two characters that you just fell for. They, were, they, were, they had such a great camaraderie. And I love that there was almost this language barrier of different cultures and countries, but there, there was just a real great relationship growing there as well. Yeah, there's, I think there's a similarity in the difference. Like they both find comfort in both of them being outsiders. And yeah. even though they don't really perfectly understand each other, they both understand the situation that the other is. And I think that's what brings but them But how together. beautiful that is really. It's yeah. about our, our, our kind of our differences that bring us together, right. you know, because there's, right. there's a kind of common sense of, you know, yeah. understanding each other. Yeah. Um, your cast were great. Where did, how was the casting process for you? So I wrote it specifically for Karin Karagulian, who works with Sean Baker. He was in Tangerine yeah. in Florida Project. And, and yeah. I wrote it for him and I knew that if he wouldn't do it we wouldn't make the movie for sure because yeah. there's such a small pool of middle-aged Armenian actors right. and we kind of looked through all of them and we realized there was no one that could do it besides him and luckily he, he responded to the material he obviously being an immigrant himself has yep. uh, he wasn't working the bags or anything but he's been through very similar circumstances did, yeah. in the first few years of, of coming to the US so uh, we were very lucky to get him and then we just brought on an amazing casting director, Jenna Jemian from New York, and she kind of shaped everyone else around him. There's quite a lot of touching moments, and there's also, he's obviously, you know, but both of them are great actors, but you, you kind of quite hands-on, do you let them play? How do you kind of work as a director? I love to, I love planning everything in great detail beforehand, so mm -hmm. then I can kind of throw everything away on set. So yeah. we did, we had about six months of prep on this. Oh, wow. So we, we did several weeks of rehearsal. We uh, went to the locations with my DP and gaffer and we pre-did all our shots. We did our lighting setup, so we had everything. And the reason I like to do that is because then when we get there, I can just, 
like let loose with the actors. Yeah. yeah. So like on average, we would shoot, you know, 20, 25 takes of everything. And I just kind of like to do various versions. I like yeah. to throw away the script. And we, we have about like, I think, hour and a half of unused footage of this movie of wow. just improv and stuff that they do. And the, when you have really good actors like that, you just yeah. kind of let them loose and, you know. But that's why it's so slick then, as you see, because it was good prep. You can't underestimate good preparation no. for, no. For, for, a, for a movie. No. Um, what was the biggest challenge you faced in making it? Uh, I think it was definitely time. We we had to shoot this in about four days, and we have, I think, 12 locations or 13 locations. You had a lot of locations. We had a lot yeah. of locations, yeah. We, we had, on average, yeah. like three or four company moves in a day. So wow. we it was that was the biggest problem. Um, and obviously shooting in downtown with yeah. all the, the sound issues and you know, people constantly stopping and yeah. you know, just looking at the camera and those kind of things. So those were definitely the major obstacles in, in shooting in such a major, hectic, active environment like downtown LA. Oh, it's it's yeah. it's hectic down here. Yeah. Coming from a sort of personal place, you know, it's got an essence of your father's story. What's it like to share that with an audience and obviously having it with us at New Filmmakers and seeing it on the festival circuit, what's that experience like for you? Uh, so obviously we were nervous to show it to people because we didn't know how audiences react. It's, it's very personal, it's very subjective and we also have this kind of collage of so many accents that it can be a little tricky to follow and obviously we're very ecstatic that people have responded the way they've had with all the screenings but I was honestly most nervous to show my dad because uh, I, I just mm. kind of wanted to see what he was going to think of it and um, and I, I think he, he really he really got what we were trying to do with it and, and that's he, a good feeling yeah, and I think he we did right by him so yeah that's and I think you know your father's example and the film's example is a great example to many people that work really hard in this city just to take care of their family and just yeah. find love and all those things that we need in life, you know? So it was great yeah. to see. Thank you. Um, what is next for you? Uh, we're now doing uh, my feature film debut, which we start shooting in June. It's called Beverly. Uh, and uh, Karin also has his part in this one. Great. But a smaller one. Uh -huh. But yeah, we're just, we're prepping for that now and we start shooting in June. So that's, that's kind of the, the next big step. And so for you as a filmmaker thus far, what, what, what have you kind of learned in your career that you kind of go by that you could maybe share with any other aspiring filmmakers out there? I think definitely to embrace the chaos. Like earlier on, I was like, everything has to be perfect. Like nothing can change. If this is how I wrote it, then that's the only way that it can look and sound. And I think I mistook the idea of being in a tour with having everything in your head from the very beginning. Yeah. And then I realized, I think later, some of the filmmakers that I re really respect, like Coppola and just kind of their work tactic is, is actually the complete opposite, which is things go wrong, accidents happen, people have ideas, and sometimes it ends up being a million times better than the original idea. And it's just yeah. to kind of embrace that and, and just go with it. Oh, I love that. Thank you very much. Well, listen, thank you, um, thank you for this, land. Thank you for bringing that to us. Thank We're very excited us. to see, keep bringing more movies. We want to see your feature as well. So fantastic. Best luck, best of luck for thank that you, as well. Thank and, you, um, and thank you for making this story happen. Thank you. Thank you.